Well, I actually grew up in a household where uh, jazz was what, what was there. Uh, my father um, basically had control of the music in the house, and so uh, that's what was played. I mean, I, I still don't know anything about classical music, because uh, there was no classical music played in my house. There was jazz played in the house. He worked for 20 years for RCA. I grew up in Camden, New Jersey, which was RCA's headquarters. And uh, I guess uh, in the environment he was working with, a lot of people had portable radios. And uh, I might have been listening to whatever uh, black teenage kids were, or kids were listening to at the time. And I, I realized after a while, he would come home and say, oh boy, could you take that hooting and hollering off? Uh, he said, I've been listening to that stuff all day long. Um, so after a while, I was at ease listening to jazz, so I felt comfortable if I was downstairs where the stereo was, where the record player was, I was perfectly comfortable listening to jazz. If I really wanted to hear uh, something else, I went up into my room where I had a nice radio and I was free to listen to it there. But I think also a lot of my friends had very eclectic tastes. And so I think even my friends listened to a lot of, I listened to a lot of folk music. There was a, it was a regular f uh, folk music program came on the radio that I used to listen to on Sunday evening. So I, I think our taste, uh, the group of folks that I hung out with, had really eclectic tastes. And uh, I think that was part of my background. But, but this jazz, I think, was there uh, always as a part of my taste. Then when I came to Boston in 1968 to go to BU, I, I came to Boston to, be, to go to, thinking I would go to med school and become a psychiatrist. And um, I, I guess I'd say I could move, I moved to a different level of appreciation for music. And I decided, I don't want to do that. I decided I wanted to do something working around music. And about uh, seven months after I got to Boston, I went on the air at WTBU, which was BU's AM station. And at first, actually, I was doing an R&B show. And then they kept on offering me additional shows. And I started doing uh, what I would call uh, a mixed music show. There were a lot of different kinds of sounds coming up in uh, the late uh, 60s and early 70s. Uh, groups like Traffic, Sly and the Family Stone, Herbie was starting, Herbie Hancock was starting to fool with some fusionist kinds of things. Uh, so I started putting together a show that would have a mixture of those kinds of sounds. Uh, but I also started doing a jazz show. When I left, I was doing four shows a week on BU station. In fact, I went to the program director, and this was important. Um, I went to the program director at one point because I realized that I was on the air more than any other announcer. And, you know, I'm on a college campus, and I'm thinking, you know, most of these kids are rock fans. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just wondering why I'm on the air more than everybody else. And he said, because when you're on the air, I know I get quality radio. And I was like, Really? Oh, okay. You know, I mean, that was like an eye opener. And it's like, and I think that's what really excited me and made me to uh, decide to go to try and do more uh, in radio. And when I went on, uh, by that time, I think I had become a jazz snob. And uh, I didn't want to hear anything else, you know. I mean, I, 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 I fell in love with John Coltrane's uh, Love Supreme album. And my freshman year in college, I would carry that album around with me. And if you invited me to your dorm room, to your apartment, if probably if I was there about 15 minutes or so, I'd say, hey, could you put this on, please? And, you know. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, and I, I really, I just didn't want to hear any other kind of music but jazz, uh, starting at that point, I think. Well, uh, TBU was only, uh, at that time, was only closed circuit to the dormitories. But when you're at BU, of course, that's a large school, so that means you are reaching a lot of people. But I was there, 
I think for about a year and a half. And BU had an FM station, WBUR, which uh, at that time used to play jazz. It's all, just about all news now. It has one uh, Latin music program. Um, but uh, I, one night I went out to a club with a couple friends of mine. And the club was up on the North Shore of Boston. So we had, we had to take a little ride to get there. And we were listening to, this, to BUR and the jazz show that was on. And I said to them on the ride, I said, I'm going to get a job on this station. And so when we came back from the club, we actually stopped at the radio station. And I went to see a friend of mine whose last name is also Jackson, uh, Oscar Jackson. And I said, man, I want to do a show here. And Oscar said to me, uh, well, your timing is perfect. There's a guy named Eric Levin who is doing the Friday night show and he's about to leave, so we need another announcer. So I sort of fell into the job at uh, WBUR. I stayed there for about, I, actually I've been very fortunate. I've been on the air for 46 years now, and I've only been off the air um, during that whole period. In 1977, I was off the air for eight months. That's, I haven't been off the air uh, since then. So. At 46 years is pretty incredible. <laughs>